All right, so just recapping what we did there. So we've created a new class called Word Tools, and then we're going to have a word counter here that needs as input a string containing the thing that we want to analyze, the words that we want to analyze. And it's going to return in the end a number that is the number of words that were that came up in the count. And so we built this little uh, string array to go in and split the words out into um, individual words and then put each one in an array for the string array. And then um, once we had that, then we took and uh, used the length property of that string array to tell us how many words it came up with. And then we're, we're setting that to this word count variable and then we return the word count variable. And what I said there at the end is typically, um, I would consider it, and many would consider it, uh, bad programming practice to return uh, something that's being calculated or something that's being done. We want the returns to be really simple. We're just handing the piece of data back. It makes it easier to read, uh, less opportunity for, for errors. And um, anyway, that would be my recommendation. And so this is going to give us a count of the words. Now let's get in and test this out by creating a, in, so in the program.cs, now if I try and, so I have this quote that the users entered. And if I try to, instead of writing out the right line, I say something like number of words. And then to that, I can then call that method that I've created um, called word counter. And so I can call word counter, whoops, let me close my string here. I can call that word counter method that I've just created and I can pass to it the quote that was entered. And so I can do all that, but it's gonna yell at me and say, hey, <laughs> there's no such thing as word counter. And sure enough, in the context of what it can see, which is just between the opening brace and closing brace of this program, which you can't see because they're hidden. Um, but part of that private void main string args line, word counter does not exist in this context. The scope of it is only within this program.cs file. I need to get out of this file and go find where it is. And so Again, if I'd set this up as a in the word tools, if this was a static method, then I can refer to specifically, I can just say go out to the word tools, sorry, word tools dot word counter. And if I save this, I'm gonna save word tools dot CS, then it will recognize um, maybe Let's save this one. Name word tools does not exist in the current context. See, I shouldn't have done this because now I got to try and figure it out. <laughs> um, oh, we want the using OOP fun keyword here. And that way it'll uh, grab the whole project and we'll be able to see the word tools. And so I figured that out by the way by um, hovering over that and you saw that it gives suggestions. Visual Studio is awesome for this. It'll say well maybe I ought to try this and you can go through and look. It's not always the thing it lists but a lot of times it is. And so then I can see that but, but we don't want to use it in that way anyway. And so let's undo that. And um, typically the use would be that we'll go into the word tools, we won't have that static keyword saying we're gonna use the class itself. Instead, we'll create an instance of that class. So I'm gonna come up here, usually classes we would declare right at the top, and then all our variables, and then um, any code that comes along after that. So I'm gonna type in the word, word word tools here, that is, and it automatically went in and used that, put in that using for us when I did that. Again, Visual Studio is awesome, just helps us out. And I need to create an instance of that. And usually when we're uh, looking at these, we know what it is. So I, I don't mind using a, a name like WT here because 
that's fine. It, it's just going to be used for a second. We know what it is. But that is going to be set to a new instance of Word Tools. And now here we can refer to our instance we just went and got off the shelf. And we can say wt.wordcounter, which is an instance of the Word Tools. Now, again, this is something that can confuse people. And hopefully it doesn't confuse us. But the idea here is that Word Tools is the template. It's the it's the it's setting up the structure for how this class is going to look and how it's going to work. It sets up the properties and the methods that are part of this uh, object. But then I just go and create an instance of the object, which is basically like saying, "Yes, you know, get me one of those." So like I can go um, and I've done this before. Order a car. So I'm going to buy a car, but I, there's not one on the lot that has the things that I want and I want my own special configuration. And so I go and put in an order for a car. All right, so that's essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, go take the template of the cars that you build and I want an instance that I haven't really done this, but my brother uh, is big on naming his car. So he's got one now called Tess and he's had it for like some crazy long amount of time, at least 20 years, um, Tess. Um, <clears throat> this is the name we're giving the car. And so in that case, it's a Toyota Corolla. And so the instance is a Corolla and he names it Tess. And then that's his instance. It's his car. And there's lots of cars like it out on the road, but Tess is his instance. There's none other out on the road that is Tess. All right. So same idea here. We're building an instance of a class. We're calling it WT. This is the reservation part. This is what's setting up a spot in memory to hold this information, the size of a Word Tools class. And then this second part is the part where we instantiate the class. And again, we can do this separately. We could end this statement here and we could say WT is equal to new Word Tools. We could take this line and we could do it down at the bottom of the program. I don't know why we want to do that. So it's two separate actions. This is the uh, de declaration, declaring the variable, in this case, the object. And this is the instantiation, which means that this is actually building it. And we can either do those as two separate processes. For example, what if we need to get some input from the user before we instantiate this because we're going to go pass in the quote this way? as part of the constructor. And so sometimes we do want to execute them separately, but more often than not, than this part right here, the new word tools is gonna to go right. Uh, is gonna go right there and then it's all done in one motion. We declare the variable and we instantiate it. All right, so now that we have that uh, set up, we can actually try using that method to see if what we did worked. And it's really good practice to constantly test your code as you go instead of doing big chunks of code and then getting a bunch of errors along the way. Um, much better to just test it along the way. And so enter a quote. And for now, just uh, testing, testing. One, two, three. Now this should treat it as three separate words, right? Because there's no spaces in here. Let's try it and see what it does. All right, number of words equals three, perfect. All right, so we have used object-oriented programming here. We've built our code in the main class and the main class calls this word tools class and specifically this word counter method in the word tools class to execute what it needs it to do and return the information that we need in order to be able to print this out. All right, so we'll work on the next method in the next video. Spencer out.